Hey everybody, hope you're all is well. So today what we're gonna talk about is a big thing, is insurance. And how insurance is affecting people buying homes. It used to be, you know, what's the interest rates? Yes, that's still important, mortgage interest rates. But now, a lot of people really have to take into consideration the cost of homeowners insurance. Because a lot of people are losing these deals not because of um, the interest rates, but they're losing them because of the cost of insurance. Not only are they losing deals because of the cost of insurance, because if you add insurance plus the mortgage plus the taxes, it's too much, but people that already have houses can't afford to even stay in houses. I can't tell you how many times I've been in people's houses doing what we call a four point and a wind mitigation, which is like an insurance inspection. And they're saying, hey, if they don't give me a discount, I gotta sell my house because when I moved here, my insurance was a thousand bucks. Now it's like 4,000 bucks, $5,000. No fault of their own. Most of them didn't have any claims, nothing. It's just, we're gonna go over the reasons why insurance went crazy. And if you think Florida has the highest insurance, it doesn't. There are other states that have higher insurance. We're gonna talk about that in a second. In the meantime, if you could do me a favor and just give this video a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber already, if you could subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. Let's talk about Florida real quick. Do you know that Florida is cost of homeowners insurance is four times higher than the national average. It's crazy, but it is, but it's not the most expensive one. Believe it or not, Oklahoma has the highest insurance, homeowners insurance. Then comes in Florida. Then after that, it's Louisiana and Texas. I read this on an article, I'll post it below so you guys can read it out. So yeah, if you guys think Florida's the highest, it's not. This problem's happening all over the country. And let's go over some reasons why it's happening. One is reinsurance. Do you know that insurance companies have to get insurance to cover themselves? So if there's a major storm and they can't cover everything, they have insurance that will help them cover the cost of paying out all the claims. Did you know in Florida that almost half the insurance companies are on the regulators watch list to see if they'll become solvent, insolvent. That's crazy. Half the insurance companies aren't in great shape and they're on a watch list. In Florida, six insurance companies just last year had to liquidate. They just didn't have enough funds to cover all the claims. So they got liquidated. Crazy. So Florida passed some new laws to help try to curb some of the costs by limiting insurance lawsuits against uh, insurance companies. And they made a few more changes, hoping that this will drive prices down. But here's the problem. Right before that happened, there was like 300,000 new lawsuits filed which basically will muddy up the waters for a very long time by the time they work it. They knew the new laws were coming in and they're like, okay, the lawyers and everybody are just saying, well, we better file now before we can't file and make all these claims. So that kind of screwed things up, you know? I'm not saying the laws are bad, but everybody follow, you know, filing lawsuits so fast right before kind of sucks. Here's another problem. According to NOAA, because of inflation, just the, the cost of everything to rebuild a house because of a storm or something, it, it increased everything by like $114 billion. So now that it costs them so much more to rebuild a house and cover the cost of a house, premium is going up because of inflation. 
and it's estimated at 114 billion. You see, in Florida, to you know, citizens is the insurance of last resort, and in order to get citizens, you, you they have to be cheaper than everybody else. So if you're within 20 percent of an insurance cost that citizens are giving out, you have to go with the other insurance company, even though citizens is 10, 15 percent cheaper because they're within 20 percent. The average, the average cost for a citizen's insurance policy is $3,700, which is still, that's a lot of money for a lot of people. So they're saying that the cost could average $5,100 to $6,800 in the near future, you know, if things don't change. And the big thing with insurance is that it doesn't seem like there's going to be an end to it. The cost increases. Citizens is requesting a 14% increase this year. If they'll get it, I'm not sure. But, you know, with everything that they were doing and insurance costs supposed to go down, they're not. So what are people going to do? They have no choice. If you have a mortgage, you have to have insurance. I recommend having insurance if you don't have a mortgage, but if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. But, so if you, you can't afford to pay your insurance with a mortgage and you don't pay it, the mortgage company is going to put force insurance on you and then you're going to end up paying even higher because they're gonna tag it onto your mortgage payment. So what choice do you do have? Sell? Something has to change. Even, you know, the reinsurers last year, they lost money because of all the claims. So last year was not a good year for reinsurers. Obviously, you know, some of the things is, the cost insurance companies are worried about is natural disasters and storms and flooding. You know, some of these people where they're building, they're in a big flood, pro flood zone. And insurance companies are taking that into consideration. You know, Florida is exposed to the Gulf and the Atlantic on both sides. So it's, it's really, really, you know, vulnerable to storms and storm surges. And this litigation that they're, everybody's always filing lawsuits against insurance companies, you know, was getting out of hand. Listen. In Florida, roofs don't last as long as other places. The sun and the rain and everything beats on them. So if your roof is old, it's old. You just have to replace it. It's not an insurance claim. Like I was doing a roof inspection a few weeks ago and the roof was in bad shape. And the client was telling me, yeah, it was because of hail damage. We had a hailstorm. We didn't have a hailstorm. I live literally a few miles away from him. We did not have a hailstorm. The roof was 23 years old in Florida. It just needs to be replaced. It's not an insurance claim issue. But he's filing an insurance claim, trying to get a free roof. Do I agree with it? No, I don't, you know? But it is what it is. Do you know that in some cases, more and more, People are actually leaving Florida because of the cost of insurance. They just leave it. It's just based on insurance. They're like, hey, I could go move to XYZ and pay under a thousand, or I could stay here and pay six, seven thousand. Especially if somebody's on a fixed income, they just can't afford it. So insurance is becoming a bigger and bigger factor on people leaving the state of Florida. If you're buying a house, there are things you could do to lessen the burden of insurance. Number one, look at the year the house was built. You know, just see if it meets new building codes or if it's an old house that was never set up to withstand storms. You know, take a look at if it's in a flood zone. If it's in a flood zone, you're gonna to have to get flood insurance. 
if you have a mortgage. So take that into consideration. If I was buying a house right now, I would say, is it a flood zone? Yes or no? And you guys know I'm gonna build on a canal, which isn't a flood zone, but I'm gonna be on stilts. I'm gonna be 16 feet to 18 feet up in the air. Like I said in that video, if I get flooded up that high, we have bigger problems in Florida. At the end of the day, you're buying a house or you want to plan to stay on your house, you got to refortify it for storms and let the insurance companies know. Do what we call a four point insurance in Florida, do a four point inspection and do a wind mitigation. So you get all the credits. You know, if you have to put impact windows or shutters up and you do that, go ahead. Sometimes the cost is outrageous and it's not worth it. But if you could afford it, put a shutter system up, any kind of shutter system that at least you could verify with the insurance companies, let them know, see if you get a discount. You know, make sure that you have your roof wall attachments, make sure they have like hurricane clips or straps or something. If not, and you have access to them, put some hurricane clips. Let the insurance company know you have hurricane clips. Your roof. If your roof is old, save to replace your roof. That's how important it is. Just, just save and replace your roof. If, so if your roof is 12, 15 years old and you know you have to replace it in five, six years, start putting some money aside to replace your roof and put what we call a secondary water protection. It's like a rubber shield and then the shingles over it because insurance companies like that stuff. There's things you could do and there's things you could think about prior to buying a house. So I would definitely, definitely consider those things. In closing, just think about insurance. Yes, think about mortgage interest rates. Yes, think about what the taxes will be after you close. Maybe not the first year, but the second year. Because like we all know, taxes adjust depending on what you pay for the price of the house in Florida. So just think about those things. Take that all into consideration. And even if the insurance cost is low, now you find a good deal and you're like, yeah, I could afford it. Look at the environment that you're in. Look what's going on with the neighborhood because your rates could jump 20, 30, 50, or double even. So that's my two cents on insurance. Really, really take insurance into consideration when purchasing a home. Anyways, that's today's video. As always, I greatly appreciate you guys watching my videos. And do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you're notified next time I upload a video. Thank you and have a great day. Speak to you soon. Bye.